Well, ahoy everyone. This is David Perry with our ongoing series, Ahoy, speaking to people around the world about the experience of what I call the first Twitter pandemic, something that has been shared by everyone around the world in different ways, but in the same global instant. And today, I'm very honored to have with us someone that I interviewed several years ago on my show, 10%, Prince Manvrinda of India. Welcome, Your Highness. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So first of all, a little background. Uh, Prince Manvrinda I met several years ago. He is, at this moment, the only openly gay member of a royal family on earth, a member of a royal dynasty in India who has turned to celebrity around the world and to doing good works for the LGBT community, and especially in India for people living with AIDS, HIV. Your Highness, before we start talking about COVID, I'd like to talk about another pandemic, the pandemic of bigotry and homophobia and AIDS, HIV. Talk to us a little bit about your work in India on behalf of people living with AIDS and how this came to be your life work. Yeah, thank you, David, for first of all, having me on this uh, uh, session again with you. And uh, just to make a correction, uh, I'm not the only openly gay member of a royal family in India. There are other royals who are now gradually coming out of the closet. So uh, yes, I'm the first one in the world to come out, but now I'm not the only one. Now there are a lot of others who are, who are beginning to come out. Uh, thanks to uh, the judgment, uh, which our Supreme Court delivered on the 6th uh, September 2018, where homosexuality was uh, uh, decriminalized. Uh, and the first time the human rights uh, were given to the citizens of our country equally. So whether uh, you are gay or you're straight or you're bi or whatever you are, whatever sexuality you are, uh, uh, it was uh, felt that uh, the uh, human rights which have been guaranteed to us by our Indian constitution was, was given. And uh, that is precisely one of the reasons why I came out of the closet and I kind of... Uh, uh, began to uh, work for the uh, issues, our issues, our LGBT issues, because uh, there is so much of uh, hypocrisy uh, in our country with regards to homosexuality, because uh, uh, many people feel that it's a Western culture. It's we are, we are kind of we have imp we are imported from the Western world, and homosexuality doesn't exist in our country. And because to break this hypocrisy, I needed to take this stand and. Uh, be true to myself and to others and that prompted me to take this uh, step of uh, creating history i would say in coming out and telling the world that yes uh, i i'm gay and uh, i'm proud of it and uh, and uh, after that a lot of changes were seen in this uh, country with regards to uh, homophobia and a uh, uh, lot of people started uh, uh, talking about this issue, which has al always been a taboo in our country and uh, not been talked about. So that's how this law of change has happened. Because I always believe that if you need any kind of change to happen in the society, we need to talk about it. That, that uh, prompts people to debate. And even though it, there may be negative uh, debate happening, doesn't matter. But at least will people talk about an issue. Uh, you you will expect some kind of change to happen, and uh, so is the case with HIV uh, and AIDS. I uh, I started working for HIV almost now uh, 20 years back through my own organization. I, I I'm running my own charitable organization called the Lakshya Trust, uh, which works uh, primarily for HIV uh, AIDS um, awareness and prevention amongst the homosexual and the transgendered uh, community. Um, but like uh, now, of course, we do a lot of other things, but like, yes, uh, HIV is also uh, a very serious issue because India ranks third in the world with regards to HIV infection. So uh, I'm currently, I have also been appointed as the uh, brand ambassador for an American uh, organization based out of Los Angeles, which is called uh, AIDS Healthcare Foundation. So I'm, yes, I know I'm, it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm the ambassador consultant for... Uh, for AHF uh, for India. So I'm taking care of uh, HIV testing and treatment in India, doing a lot of advocacy with the uh, parliamentarians, political parties, government, 
media educational institutions uh, uh, because because uh, in india the problem is that not many people are tested so unless you get yourself tested you you cannot know what is the status whether you are positive or negative so my focus is to get as many people tested so we know the actual figures and once they get tested uh, we immediately start their treatment so i don't know whether to call you i don't know whether to call you your majesty or your, or uh, or your excellency mr ambassador uh, I know. Yes, I got. I got added responsibilities now since we met last time. So uh, the, the, and 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 to take care of this whole big country is is quite a challenge because India, as you know, is comprising of several states. Uh, it's not even a country. I call it a subcontinent with so many different states, so many different cultures, different governments. So it's very challenging to work. Uh, and there are some states where the HIV prevalent rate is really very high. It's some as high as two uh, percent, mm. you know, of the population. So it's it's very difficult uh, to uh, overcome, uh, and especially in India, we have uh, one of the biggest issues we have in India is migration. Uh, mm. People traveling from one state to the other because of job opportunities, and there are single male migrant population. And as we know, eighty five percent of uh, uh, HIV is transmitted through sexual transmission. So it's very difficult to uh, keep a track and to uh, control uh, this um, epidemic. So tell me about this second epidemic that you've been dealing with. The thing that for me and my husband Alfredo became very real on Friday, March 13th. Mm. Uh, Friday the 13th in this country has kind of always been seen as a bad luck day. And certainly it was the day when COVID became very real in the United States. Mm. Do you remember where you were when you realized that COVID was going to be something quite serious that was going to impact your life and yeah. the life of people in India? Yes, uh, I think uh, it was around the same time when you mentioned Friday the 13th in India. We had started to realize that it's, it's going to be a serious issue here because and we, had, we, we were reading reports and America is spreading really fast and uh, there are a lot of um, casualties are happening. So our prime minister uh, declared uh, a lockdown uh, for the whole country around uh, 22nd or 23rd of March, uh, where uh, uh, the whole country went into a lockdown. And I was in my royal establishment uh, where I'm I'm sitting currently and giving you this interview uh, uh, in in the in the in my in my kingdom. Uh, a spell kingdom where uh, I'm also developing a, um, a LGBTQ plus uh, community campus. So I had come here for some work and uh, from uh, Mumbai, and uh, and then this lockdown was declared. So I then I uh, since then I have been here since almost four months. I've been um, based here. I haven't been out of the state because uh, uh, we have been told that it's, it's as far as possible. We we need to remain indoors. Uh, and not move out unless it's uh, it's an emergency or so yeah uh, definitely uh, it was a first time experience for uh, i think all of us to uh, have realized that we are now getting imprisoned kind of you know it is like it's like a house arrest you know when you have you are subject to house arrest then it was something like that where you are like you know you are totally um, uh, like, you know, uh, not capable of uh, doing anything uh, and uh, there's nothing much you can do. You have your limitations. You can't go out. You can't do many things which you want to do. And uh, I, I, for me, especially uh, uh, at this generation uh, where I'm not that much used to um, IT and technology, uh, I was kind of forced to uh, learn technology in order to be in touch with others like for example uh, uh, things like zoom and you know these things i've never done in my life before because uh, uh, i've always believed in uh, physical uh, uh, presence uh, physical touch you know being in touch with people working with people on ground uh, th those are the things which i have been used to and then you are you are you come to a situation where you you cannot be present Anywhere you have to, if I have to see somebody, I have to see somebody virtually. You know, the word word virtual has now become part and parcel of my life. I mean, anything I'm doing, I'm conducting meetings is virtual. I'm doing interviews, it's virtual. 
do, doing anything today has, uh, has uh, even I, I have received an invitation to uh, be part of the French National Day, which is coming up on 14th of July. The, yes, the, the Consul General of France. Yeah, I call, the Consul General of France is a friend of mine and she invited me and uh, I'm doing a French National Day virtually this year. You know, so, so life has changed. Life has changed for so many of us and I guess uh, that's the only way we can remain health, healthy and safe is uh, to adapt to this new lifestyle which we are all forced to uh, adapt to. Well, so, you've been very generous with your celebrity and your title on behalf of the LGBTQ population and, and especially people living with AIDS, HIV in, in India. How are things now vis-a-vis -vis COVID? What, as we speak to you now at what is eight o'clock in the evening here in California and 8.30 in the morning the next day in India, what is the situation like as far as COVID is? And I mean the situation physically, health-wise, how are things, but also socially and psychologically. How is the country doing? How are you doing? Uh, I'll talk first of, about the country. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, our Prime Minister, uh, uh, Mr. Modi, he took a stand, uh, uh, like, you know, in, in the interest of the country. Uh, he, he took the stand of uh, shutting down the entire country, uh, irrespective of how important it uh, has been for uh, most of us. And I think that initial shutting down or lockdown. Uh, did uh, benefit the country in a uh, lot of ways because we have to understand uh, India has a huge population. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, and it has not just a huge population, the density per uh, square mile is very, very high in certain areas. So, uh, as, and as we know that social distancing is an important uh, factor mm -hmm. in uh, trying to, uh, uh, like, you know, prevent this uh, COVID-19 from, uh, from spreading. So it was very important uh, for a country like us to take this decision of maintaining social distancing. And because see, on the whole, in India, people, uh, even though they are, they, I won't say they are not health conscious, but they are not used to taking uh, precautions like wearing a mask or uh, using hand sanit. I mean, hand sanitizer was something which was totally unknown to most of us. We don't didn't know what is a hand sanitizer. Yeah. So, and wearing mask is something you know, which, which none of us uh, are even used to it, like, you know, having something on your, uh, on the forehead, uh, I mean, on, the, on your nose. So, uh, uh, to get these, it was really a very, a, a struggle, a challenge for most of us to kind of, you know, to even think about using these methods. But uh, because of the timely lockdown situation, uh, we were able to save the country from a major uh, disaster. Because imagine in such a highly populated country where, uh, uh, forget about social distancing, we, I have myself seen, uh, because I work for a lot of migrant population, I've seen uh, homes where in a small little room, there are 20 to 30 people uh, staying, you know, almost, uh, you know, touching each other situation. So in that kind of a situation, if, if uh, COVID-19 is, is going to spread, it, it would have definitely been disastrous. But fortunately, we didn't have that many uh, casualties. Uh, I won't say it is under control. Still, we, have, we, are, we are struggling to combat it uh, uh, at various levels. It's, it's like different in different states, like uh, talking about my state, Gujarat, which is also Mr. Modi's state. Uh, it, like we uh, we had very few cases in, in the beginning, and then uh, uh, it has it has gradually the the cases uh, increased, and now also they're increasing. But now what I'm hearing is that there is it, it's something called uh, uh, herd human uh, herd immunity, which is again a new word for me. I'm, I'm I was I was recently having a meeting with a. Uh, head of the police department here in our district and he was telling me that there's something called herd, human, herd immunity. So I asked him what is herd immunity. He said over a period of time what, uh, what happens is those who have already got infected with uh, uh, or uh, with, uh, diagnosed with COVID-19, uh, those 
uh, those individuals have lesser chance to get reinfected again uh, with uh, with close proximity so now we are reaching that herd immunity stage where uh, we are expecting a, a plateauing effect to happen where the cases will not increase but they will 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 remain uh, the same they will plateau and then gradually a decline uh, will be seen and that's happening in certain some of the cities in uh, india where the the number of cases are declining and at the same time the the, the uh, those who have been uh, diagnosed uh, they are their treatments uh, have been effectively uh, have has been started so there has been a uh, now certain places a decline has been uh, seen but third, certain again states as i told you india is not a country it's a more like a subcontinent so there are certain states which are doing extremely well they have really managed to control quite a bit there but there are certain states where like for example uh, mumbai which is in maharashtra state is really in a bad situation there's uh, because of the population and many other reasons it's it's still uh, trying to uh, combat so uh, even though they have opened up the uh, borders uh, in the past if the borders were, were sealed you are not allowed to travel uh, but now they opened up the borders so uh, uh, because of uh, because now see another big uh, challenge india has to face is the economic situation uh, yes. because lockdown will also yeah economically it is going to impact very badly so uh, they had to open up certain businesses some industries uh, to see that the economic uh, situation in india doesn't crash so yes. but then again yeah you have to now you have to kind of uh, weigh the consequences of seeing uh, economic versus lockdown uh, or economic versus versus health you know trying to see how you can bridge the gap to see that uh, how one one can, one should not affect Uh, the other situation yes tonight on the news i was watching it was uh, i was seeing the top 5 countries in the world as far as cases and mortality from covid and india the world's most populous democracy was not in the top 5 to those of us in the united states and even in europe i have family in italy we have a uh, family in spain many many friends in italy two countries that were hit incredibly hard early on Uh, Alfredo and I were actually in Spain the week before it hit. I've been to India twice. I've I've seen uh, as a tourist, as a visitor, the incredible density of Mumbai, uh, uh, of uh, Chennai. It, it seems incredible to those of us in the United States that India has not been impacted more, and we're very grateful for it. Of course, as are you. In our last few minutes, tell me why do you think? that india has somehow escaped the worst so far of covid-19 see as i told you in the beginning uh, our prime minister was wise enough to have understood uh, the consequences of this in other countries like uh, be- before it kind of uh, hit india badly uh, he had seen uh, italy and uh, you know spain and these other countries uh, and even america Uh, having to face uh, this disaster so uh, his, this uh, uh, his timely action of uh, having this lockdown declared and not just declaring it uh, seeing to it i, I must admit uh, david that uh, our police department in india did an excellent job they mm-hmm. uh, i have never seen the police so dedicated so committed because uh, they they sacrificed their lives their health and they are on the streets trying to convince people uh, those who are not uh, doing social distancing or not wearing masks or anything to you know trying to see that they are like uh, they are maintaining uh, uh, their their hygiene and their health issues so that was th- that was really very commendable of, uh, in what, what in india even the army uh, these, uh, the officers i mean the the defense department also taking care to see so i think uh, uh, what india ha- how why india has achieved is that uh, we have cared for another person and not just cared for ourselves they have like we i've seen people going out on the streets to like you know to ensure that the other one other person is like you know uh, and we we all kind of worked uh, you know u- united you know we have worked in in this situation see when this crisis happening and especially 
in a in a country where there are different governments working there is always an ego problem of you know that one government trying to show that oh we are better of it but then our prime minister he brought he used to have uh, and again on virtual media he has had so many meetings with uh, the chief ministers of all the states and uh, there are some uh, uh, i mean it's multiple government structure and it's not just one government in each state a lot of states they got uh, governments which are not from the ruling party and to get the whole country together to agree to you know uh, to uh, to uh, to come to one uh, conclusion is is a very difficult task because as i was telling you each one of us has our own ego problem you know? so that was itself a challenge and uh, uh, the 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 these states agreed uh, and they they uh, listened to the prime minister and they kind of acted appeal so i think uh, that was one of the reasons why we were able to avert this uh, big uh, uh, disaster I, i would say so we just have a couple minutes left in closing um uh, what would you like to say to your friends and colleagues in the united states I, we don't know when you'll be able to be back here in the united states uh my husband alfredo has never been to india i've been twice we were hoping at some point actually to visit this year maybe next we look forward to it but until we can actually see each other in person either in in your country or or our country what would you like to say as an indian to the people of the united states what lessons can you and your country the largest democracy in the world teach to the united states uh the oldest democracy in the western world what lessons can india teach us during this covid crisis see uh, uh, about the one of the lessons which i would like to say is that uh, uh, we should not always be dependent on government or like uh, what what actions the government is taking it is the duty of the citizens also to see uh, what is what is good or what is not good for the for the country many times we always blame it on the government oh government did this so that's why things have happened no we we, we need to realize ourselves because who is the government today government is somebody who we have elected and uh, given them the power so uh, many times in this situation it is it is a com- combined effort of the entire country coming together and leaving aside their egos and their uh, prejudices and everything at home we should all uh, come together and uh, fight as one country and not uh, uh, divide ourselves and fight because we we in this this time this time of crisis we need to be united and we we need to have one voice and not have arguments oh that uh, this, this is better or that's better and all but uh, and and of course we need a strong leadership to bring this together and uh, see i am not a, again a person from uh, i mean supporting any political party in, the, in uh, as such i have i have been very neutral when it comes to uh, political parties are concerned but i must admit that mr modi did an excellent job it was if he if he would not been up the prime minister of india then i don't know what would have happened to this country uh with with this pandemic but mr modi really did a excellent job uh, uh, very responsible and uh, decision and decisions taken at the right moment uh, i think that that's that's important you, the leadership needs to take the decision uh, the the right moment at the right uh, time and uh, what decisions are taken at the leadership is also very important and people uh, following that decision uh is also uh of importance so i think that that message of mine uh, is is very clear and uh, if that's done i think then we can all save ourselves no well, thank you very much mr ambassador your highness thank you for using your celebrity your royal lineage especially to help people in the lgbt community those living with aids hiv and now helping people get through another pandemic your highness very much appreciate you spending time with us tonight ahoy yeah thank you thank you for having me